Hello and welcome everyone. We're just delighted today to be here for the launch of Educate Us and um, want to really thank you for making time to be here with us. We have a wonderful lineup of people to talk to you about uh, why we exist and what our objectives are. Um, the fact that you're here already indicates that you understand how important comprehensive sex ed is um, and why it's important to dedicate real resources and time and effort and people to making sure that, that we have um, comprehensive sex ed across the nation. Um, I would like to first introduce um, as our uh, first speaker, uh, Chris Harley, who is the president and CEO of SECUS, Sex Ed for Social Change. Previously, Chris ran her own consulting business, directed the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, uh, Civil and Human Rights for the 2020 Census Campaign. She also served as the Deputy Director for the National Council of Asian Pacific Americans and was Director of Intergovernmental Affairs for the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders under the Obama administration. Chris also spearheaded health justice and reproductive justice policy efforts for the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations and the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum. And she brings experience working at state level agencies and community organizing to seek us. And I think it's fair to say that we would not be here without Chris's commitment to this. And so I'm gonna hand this over to Chris to get us started. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Oops, let me get my video on. Uh, <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, I am uh, so excited and honored to be here to be addressing uh, so many amazing powerhouses that um, are in the room joining us. Uh, thank you so much. I did want to just take a quick moment to extend a few important thank yous to the SECUS team, Allison, Donna, Gail, and the Ven Group. Um, including Vincent Ng, uh, Joyce Liu, and Liana Marcho, Narcho, who um, have been working so hard to make this uh, affiliation happen and the launch event happen. Um, I've got to shout out Jacqueline Friedman, who uh, has been the brains and muscle behind this whole thing and who has been double timing it to turn a dream into reality. Um, and I want to appreciate Soraya Shamali and Kara Burke -San, uh, Powers for their leadership and partnership on the Educate Us Board of Directors. Um, it's really amazing and wonderful to be doing this with such a group of visionary leaders um, to make this happen. Uh, so as Soraya shared, I'm Christine Soyoung Harley, President and CEO of SICA, Sex Ed for Social Change. And I'm beyond proud to be here with you today to share the news of this incredibly exciting announcement. For those of you who may not be familiar, SICUS uh, has, main, has maintained that human sexuality is a fundamental and worthy of dignity and respect since 1964. Our mission is to advance sex education through advocacy, policy, and coalition building. Our work and vision is to create an equitable nation where all people receive sex education, are affirmed in their identities, and have the power to make decisions about their own health, pleasure, and wholeness. And since 2019, SICUS has been talking about sex education as a vehicle for social change, because we believe that sex education has the power to lay the groundwork for positive, progressive, much needed social and culture shifts in America. It's about centering that transformative role that sex education can play in our society by normalizing human sexuality and fighting for medically accurate and developmentally appropriate information that is shared without stigma or shame, and about ensuring that we are making policy progress that centers the lived experiences of our most marginalized and underserved populations, people of color, LGBTQ individuals, women, trans, and non-binary folks who need our help. At SICUS, we are talking about sex education as an effective policy solution to teach young people about things like bodily autonomy, consent, healthy relationships, LGBTQ inclusion, and beyond. And we believe that sex ed done right can sit at that intersection of gender justice, racial justice, and queer liberation, and that we can build the bridges to bring reproductive justice advocates, the LGBTQ community, HIV advocates, the criminal justice reform, domestic violence survivors, and prevention advocates, along with parents and educators, students, colleges, 
every one of us who believe that actually teaching young people the information and life skills that they need allows them to live safe, healthy lives, to make good decisions and to be empowered to live their best life. But look, it's no secret that we are living still through a difficult moment in this country. Over the past several years, there have been several national conversations calling for change. The Me Too movement highlighted that we as a society don't have a common understanding of consent, nor the tools to prevent sexual violence against people with less social power. The call from the Movement for Black Lives asked each and every one of us to take on the work of dismantling white supremacy and systemic racism. And it's clear that young people are beyond calling for change and making clear that we're living in a new landscape of gender and sexual diversity that we've got to lean into in order to create a safe and beautiful and home for every beautiful soul. And yet there's a small but loud group of folks who hear these calls for change and respond by doubling down in their opposition to sexual and reproductive health and rights. And they are working actively to deny people accurate information about their bodies and about their lives. We see the, these voices popping up in school board meetings across the country and it's astounding and it's disgusting. But we know that no matter the misguided opinions of these handful of folks, it's not gonna stop us from creating the America that we all know needs to happen where every single one of us can be seen, affirmed, valued, respected and supported. Real change Real and effective change is made at local levels, in communities and on the ground. And that especially rings true when it comes to advancing sex education. At CECAS, we've started to make this shift to build a movement to advance policies and programs around the country. We've launched the Sex Ed Policy Action Council with members in 34 states to advance sex ed policies at the state and local level and to build a network of peers that are sharing their knowledge on how to advance progressive policies that speak to the needs of our young people. But it's time for us to make sure that we have all of the tools at our disposal to advance progress in our communities, to achieve social change on a national scale, which is why we are overjoyed uh, for this new opportunity to partner with Jacqueline Friedman and our brand new sister organization, Educate Us, Seek Us in Action. Jacqueline Friedman is an educator, an activist, and an author of four powerfully feminist books. Her podcast was named one of the best podcasts by both Marie Claire and Esquire. Jacqueline's work popularized the, ses the yes means yes standard of sexual consent that has been implemented on US campuses and made law into numerous states and countries. She's already a change maker who led the successful hashtag uh, Facebook rape campaign to force Facebook to ban hate speech uh, and, and content that promoted uh, gender-based violence. So Jacqueline is not only the powerhouse that is going to bring us into a new era of movement for sex education, uh, but she is already setting uh, incredibly high standards for the world that we can work together to create. So without further ado, I'm so excited to invite Jacqueline Friedman to share her vision because we wanna make sure that everyone knows that sex education has the power to spark long-term, large-scale social change, and we invite you all to be a part of this movement. Take it away, Jacqueline. Thank you so much, Chris. Oh my goodness. Um, I just wanna say, uh, I do all of the thanks to the CECAS team who's been just incredible trying to make a real organization where my idea once was, um, but also a very, very special thank you to Chris for just being an incredible co-leader and partner as we developed this idea this year. Um, I, I genuinely, we could, we, as Sarai said, we could not be here uh, without you. Um, I'm so excited to see all of you and we can't get this done without you either. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I came to think about doing this idea. Um, I actually really started, first started thinking about how we change US politics around sex education in earnest 
almost a decade ago in a New York Times profile of the wonderful sex education that Oliver Natkio does, uh, was profiled. Uh, he does it in a private school. And there was all this conversation about how great it was and how great it would be if we did that in public schools, but you couldn't do that in the United States. And so it's just a darn shame. And uh, as an organizer, I almost never take no for an answer. I really hate that received wisdom, like we can't do that here. Uh, and so it started to bug me enough so that when I was talking to agents about my third book, uh, I was pitching out an idea, uh, a book where I would research how we would change sex education politics in the US. Uh, my eventual brilliant agent, uh, Anna Sproul Latimer at Neon Literary said, not enough people are going to buy that book. <laughs> and so I wrote Unscrewed on, instead, which I'm very proud of. But, uh, but I've been obsessed about this issue for years because we know, and by the way, the right also knows that sex education is one of the most powerful tools there are for social change. Um, the right has been funding it for decades. Uh, if you think there hasn't been sex education in schools, you know, then you're pretending that they're not teaching abstinence education. Um, now, I call that propaganda and not education, but they call it sex education. Um, and, and they've gotten results from it, and it's time for us to take the reins. Uh, we are the majority, and it's time for us to start acting like it. Uh, more recently, I've been involved in recent legislative cycles here in Massachusetts working to get uh, sex ed standards passed in the state. We are actually one of the only six states that don't have any uh, standards uh, for what's taught in sex education and have taken hundreds of thousands of dollars just last year in abstinence only funding here in Massachusetts. I'm happy to say that we are further along in that fight than we ever have been and are pretty hopeful that this could be the year for Massachusetts. Um, but I've learned a lot in that fight uh, about who's holding the bag. And the reality is who's holding the bag is organizations whose primary focus is something else and who need to be able to work on those issues. And so I really came to understand that we need a political an organization, an organization that can do electoral advocacy, direct organizing um, that has as its sole mission changing sex education in the United States for good. Um, and that's what we've built. And here's how we're going to do it. Um, we're going to transform three basic factors that right now are working against us, but we're going to flip on their heads. The first one is voter ignorance, right? So most people just haven't spent a lot of time thinking about the issue of sex education as a social change issue. I'm actually thinking about a conversation I had with a friend this summer, a friend who was, I think, in this room when I explained the project to her and she said, I, I just have genuinely never thought about it that way before, you know? Um, and once she did, she was like, yeah, of course this is a, should be a big progressive social change issue. Um, so we need to really help folks who are already temperamentally on our side to understand what's at stake in sex ed. Um, we also have to work against the voter ignorance in that, especially in bluer states, in more progressive states, there's an assumption that, uh, kids are already getting great sex education in school. They just don't really think about it. And they think we must have that covered. And then others are, are also ignorant in another way in that they think they are in the minority. They want good sex education in schools, but they think that their neighbors mostly don't. And so they don't wanna stick their neck out. But the reality is poll after poll shows that we are the majority. Um, and so we really can activate if we all activate together. So those are the ignorances that we're, we're going to pierce, uh, educate us. Um, we also, too often in efforts to change sex ed policy for the better, have taken a small ball defensive posture. We focused on teen pregnancy reduction and STI prevention. The challenge with that is threefold. First of all, straight off the bat, it reinforces stigma and exclusion, right? If you talk about the need to, produ to reduce teen pregnancy, first of all, you wind up stigmatizing teen moms. And it winds up having a real racial component. And you're really stigmatizing girls of color in particular. And when you focus on SEI prevention, and usually it gets focused on HIV because that's the big boogeyman that's most likely to be able to kill you, you're feeding right into homophobic and transphobic propaganda. I'm not saying we don't want to support young people in not getting pregnant if they don't want to get pregnant, and obviously we want to help folks not get infections. Um, but when we focus our message there, we see a bunch of ground to the right, and we actually reinforce stigma that we don't want to reinforce. 
Um, so we want to shift the focus to what CECAS is already doing, which is sex ed for social change. It's not against something, it's for something. Um, that defensive posture also like doesn't really appeal to parents who don't want to think about the issue, right? If we only talk about teen pregnancy and STIs, we're not reaching parents who think, oh, my kid's just not going to have sex, so I don't need to worry about that. That's not a problem in my household, it's none of my business. And then it also really just undersells the culturally transformative potential of comprehensive sex education, which misses out entirely on the chance to inspire voters, many voters who aren't parents, right, who care about social change issues, to get involved in making this change. And then the last thing that we're flipping the script on is much more straightforward, which is we haven't had a C4 or PAC or any organization that could play in the political arena. Uh, and we do now. Welcome to educate us. Um, we're ready to tell a big, bold story with a bunch of leaders on the ground, including some who've been so generous to spend time with us today, and you're going to hear from them in a moment, to tell a bold new story about the culturally transformative power of comprehensive sex education. We can turn undecided, unengaged citizens into passionate sex ed voters. And in doing so, we'll also strengthen and move in solidarity with other anti-racist, feminist, and pro-LGBTQ liberation forces, because our, our causes and our enemies are one and the same. One more note, and then I'm going to I'm going to move along, but I started working on this, as you can tell, long before education became ground zero in our culture wars. Uh, I'm hardly glad that is happening, but I am challenging each of us, including myself, to see it as an opportunity to see this moment where the focus is so much on education as our moment to turn the tables. Young people are already leading powerfully in some of the most impactful movements for climate action, racial justice, trans rights, and more. And young people can also be, also care an enormous amount about the quality of their own sex education. And this is our moment to build an intergenerational, intersectional movement that puts into action what we know in theory that we are the actual moral majority. Okay, I'm gonna come back around at the end and tell you a little more in depth how we're gonna do it, what our tactics are gonna look like, and also answer a few of your questions. We probably won't get to all of them. Um, but first, I'm very pleased to debut our brand new launch video. You are the first humans outside of my team to see it. Uh, we hope you'll help us spread it all over social media after today's event. Uh, without further uh, ado, Welcome to Educate Us. It's okay to admit it. No matter where or how we grow up, most of us were failed by our sex education. In the fifth grade, our teacher answering a question of my classmates, which was, if boys get boners, what do girls get? And she said, periods. It was all shame and fear-based. It did absolutely nothing for me and my peers. Um, nearly everything that I learned about sexual or romantic relationships, I learned from movies or TV or Maxim or Tucker Max. Without having any kind of education in the public school or without having parents who seek out other places to find a comprehensive sex ed, these kids, when they have questions, they'll turn to the internet. One in four LGBTQIA plus youth in my county have been sexually harassed. These aren't just numbers, there are real students behind this, real students who cannot get a proper education. It was about, you know, first and foremost, procreation after marriage for the purpose of having a kid. Um, and it was never about connection. Uh, pleasure was never discussed and uh, queerness was definitely not um, on the table. We deserve better. Tomorrow's students deserve better too. Good sex education can protect kids against bullying, abuse, and violence, freeing them up to focus on their studies and do better at school. It can help them know and stand up for their own boundaries, recognize each other's humanity, and have healthy, satisfying relationships for the rest of their lives. And yet, every time good people try to make sex education better in their own communities, right-wing extremists launch disgusting attacks. They're betting that their fear-mongering will divide and distract us. 
so that they can turn the schools we pay for with our tax dollars, schools that are supposed to support and strengthen every child, into propaganda machines for their homophobic, transphobic, racist, misogynist agenda. It doesn't have to be this way. More than 90% of parents across all political leanings want good quality sex education taught to their children. We are the majority. Let's start acting like it. Today, in partnership with SECUS, Sex Ed for Social Change, we're launching Educate Us, a national movement laser focused on advancing progressive sex education across the country. We believe that good public sex education can change the world. And we're not going to stop until every child in this country has access to it. But it's going to take all of us to get there. To join us or to learn more, visit educateusaction.org. It's time to educate us. 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 Thank you so much, Jacqueline, um, for introducing us. And with that wonderful video, it's just amazing to see how much work has gone into this in the last few days. Um, I want to also take a moment. Uh, I was so eager to uh, launch us that I didn't introduce myself, but my name is Soraya Shamali, and I'm a longtime um, writer and activist collaborator with Jacqueline. And I'm really, truly honored to be on the, on the board of uh, our organization. Um, I'm going to jump right in and introduce our next speaker. Uh, we are really so happy to have this lineup of panelists to talk to you today, each of whom brings a, a different level of experience and insight into the topics that uh, Jacqueline discussed. Our first speaker is Dr. Sarah Flowers. She's the Vice President of Education and Training at Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Prior to joining Planned Parenthood in 2018, Dr. Flowers was Director of Youth Initiatives for Love Heals Center for Youth and Families at GMHC. In this role, she expanded existing and launched new programs, as well as oversaw sex education and leadership program curriculum development and revision. She also coordinated quantitative and qualitative program evaluation and reporting, cultivated and maintained community partnerships, and hired, trained, and managed staff and a freelance health education team. Concurrently, she was an adjunct assistant professor for York College while serving as a postdoctoral research fellow for the college's collaborative research group on health policy and promotion and urban health lab. Dr. Flowers previously served as member of the boards of directors for both the New York Abortion Access Fund and SECUS. She's a member of Women of Color Sex Sexual Health Education Network, a trainer on emotional intelligence with equilibrium dynamics in San Francisco, and a published author. She holds a doctorate in public health from the Graduate School and University Center CUNY, as well as BA in psychology and a Master of Public Health degree, both from George Washington University. Dr. Flowers, welcome, and thank you for spending time with us today for this launch. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, good afternoon, good morning, hola, aloha, hello everyone. My name is Sarah Flowers. I'm the Vice President of Education and Training at Planned Parenthood Federation of America. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York. On behalf of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, we are thrilled to partner with Educate Us to ensure access to sex education for all. As many of you already know, Planned Parenthood is the nation's leading provider of high quality, affordable sexual and reproductive health care for all people. What some of you may not know, though, is that Planned Parenthood is also the nation's largest provider of sex education. Through programs in schools, in communities, in health centers, Planned Parenthood affiliates are a trusted source of sex education that is medically accurate, inclusive of all identities and abilities, and free from shame or judgment. Planned Parenthood also provides sex education and information online to young people across the country through things like RU, our sex ed chatbot, 
our live chat text hotline, which is staffed by trained educators, and our library of videos, quizzes, and information across our PlannedParenthood.org website. PPFA's mission and the mission of Educate Us are reaching towards the same goal, unfettered access to sex education for young people in this country. We do this because we are passionate about giving people the information and skills they deserve to live their healthiest and most fulfilling lives when it comes to sex and relationships. When done right, sex education provides young people with the information and skills that they need to navigate relationships, take care of their sexual health, and live confidently in their identities, experiences, and abilities. We know this. We know that sex education can be a transformative experience and a force for young people and communities, and it can lead to positive social change. We know this because we know that when all students in a school get sex ed that is inclusive of all identities, all abilities and experiences and openly incorporates learning about the full gender spectrum, dismantles racist stereotypes and honors the fluidity of sexual orientation that we are making an impact and so are our students. Right now in the US, far too many young people do not have access to sex education. Only 29 states and the District of Columbia mandate sex education. And I may be preaching to the choir here, but I got the mic, I'm gonna keep going because you all know this, you joined and you support it. We know that only 17 states require content to be medically accurate, only 17. And nine states require content to be culturally appropriate and not biased against race, sex, or ethnicity. And only three states prohibit programs from promoting religion. Newly released data from Guttmacher Institute shows that from 2015 to 2019, only half of adolescents across the US received sex education that met the minimum federal standards. These data are important and will help us continue to develop effective strategies. It also confirms what we already know. We have work to do and we're gonna do it together. Young people deserve sex education that sets them up for success, regardless of their sexual orientation, ability status, gender identity, race, ethnicity, or zip code. Like many of you here, PPFA believes that providing sexual and reproductive health care services, including abortion, is essential and intertwined with the right to sex education. Unfortunately, Individuals and entities who are actively working to take abortion access away are the same people who are working to keep young people from accessing sex education that they need and deserve. In recent years, we have seen well-coordinated efforts from a core group of organizers to limit access to abortion. These are the exact same people who want to take away access to sex education or replace it with abstinence only until marriage programs under the cover of parental rights and inflammatory disinformation about what sex education looks like in schools. Their goal is to shame people for their sexuality, for their identities and experiences and punish them for making decisions for themselves. The good news is, and it's been said already today, that the vast majority of people are on our side. Sex education is extremely popular. More than 90% of parents and likely voters support sex education in high school, and more than 89% of parents and likely voters support sex education in middle school. We are excited to continue to work alongside organizations who share our mission of making sex education more accessible, more equitable, and more inclusive for all. We are honored to be a part of this day and could not be happier to work alongside Educate Us to ensure sex education for all. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, it's really amazing to hear uh, all of the work that Planned Parenthood does in this area. And um, I know how uh, important um, and frankly delighted we are to be partnering with you. I'm going to introduce next Graham Weinshank, who is the co-founder and the core team leader of the Virginia Coalition for Sex Ed Reform. Um, as Jacqueline said, I think that, you know, we, we need to take this perspective that we are the moral majority and that 
the changes that we want to see generationally really have to happen at every level of our society. Um, and so Graham has um, been working very hard on the ground for several years. He became passionate about sex ed reform while serving as the chair of the uh, Virginia Young Dems Team Caucus during his high school senior year. Since 2017, he has been the primary author of three iterations of comprehensive sex education reform legislation in Virginia, no easy feat, we know, um, including SB uh, 1235 in 2017 and HB 159 in 2018. Um, in his capacity as co-founder and core team leader for the coalition, Graham has helped grow it since its created, uh, creation in 2018. Um, and he is also a principal author of the Virginia Healthy Youth Act. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Graham, to talk about this work that you've done and your vision for the future. Yeah, thank you so much for, for having me here today. It's truly an honor to be here and to be sharing my thoughts uh, with you all for such a momentous occasion. Um, my journey with sex education reform began in 2017 as a high school senior. And going into the 2017 General Assembly session, I naively thought that elected officials would be responsive to things like science, data, and facts. But after a pretty rude awakening with the failure of the bill that I wrote that year and the failure of my second bill in 2018, I got together with fellow activists here in Virginia and co-founded the Virginia Coalition for Sex Education Reform because we realized that in order to protect our students and to ensure that they got the education that they deserve, we needed to build a broad movement with political power. And so since 2018, our coalition has grown substantially and we are ready to bring this fight to the Virginia General Assembly once again, to share our stories, to tell Virginia's elected officials that abstinence and abstinence plus educate, sex education don't work and to tell them that the system is thoroughly broken. But, for the, but the problem for us uh, has always been communicating the urgency of this problem in a state like Virginia. As it might have become clear last week, we are not the solidly liberal state folks around the country tend to think uh, that we are. And with the hard right in control of Richmond, with their drums of war steadily banging against the imaginary enemies of critical race theory, transgender inclusion, LGBT themed books and education in general, we need to fight harder than we've ever fought before to protect the rights of Virginia students and to ensure that every student has the right to access medically accurate and comprehensive information about their own bodies and their own lives. And that's why the Virginia Coalition for Sex Education Reform is so proud and honored to stand with Educate Us. We have been working with Educate Us for the past several months and the evolution of our efforts here in Virginia speaks to the promise and the power of what Educate Us will bring to this movement on a national level and in every state. With the, with the Virginia Coalition for Sex Ed Reform being led entirely by a team of volunteers, the capacity that Educate Us has added to this movement is simply incomparable. Now more than ever, this fight for comprehensive sex education reform is a battle of messaging and outreach. With Educate Us's involvement in Virginia, we have, benefit we have benefited from the expertise of professional communicators gaining the ability to align our messaging more closely with the political realities on the ground. With their knowledge and their support, Educate Us has opened doors that we previously thought were closed and locked forever. And now we are fully prepared to engage with every opportunity in front of us. Now I'd be remiss to say that without a doubt, this movement took a hit last week, um, but we have taken hits before. In Virginia, we have been fighting this fight for almost six years, and every time this movement takes a hit, it gets a little bit more difficult to get up off the ground. But with Educate Us alongside us in this fight, it's become easier for us to get up, dust ourselves off, and get back in the ring. I'm not sure yet what the next year or the next two years or the next four years will bring for this movement in Virginia, but if there's one thing that I am absolutely positive of, it's that this movement isn't backing down, and that Educate Us will be right next to us lifting us up as we fall, building us up as we grow, and celebrating with us as we succeed together. Um, thank you so much for having me here today, and I can't wait to see what the future will bring with Educate Us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Graham. That was wonderful to, to hear um, about your work. Um, I'm going to now introduce Fran Hutchins. Uh, she's the Executive Director of Equality Federation, the National Strategic Partner to State-Based Organizations, 
working to win equality in the communities we call home. She has been with the Federation since 2012 and worked on the ground with our partners to build strong organizations, develop tailored strategies and create data driven solutions to meet the needs of this movement. Fran's career has focused on building strong progressive movement that changes the way we approach our most pressing social problems, poverty, homelessness, education, economic inequality and discrimination. She's especially proud to have served as regional field director for Mainers United for Marriage, the successful 2012 campaign to win marriage for same sex couples in Maine. Thank you so much Fran for being here with us today. Thanks so much. I am, uh, I'm really honored to be here supporting Educate Us. Uh, we've been proud to partner with SEEKUS for many years now and um, in our joint efforts to ensure LGBTQ plus students are reflected in sex education um, because we all know that sex ed isn't comprehensive unless it reflects all people um, and identities. So uh, really excited about this launch and the Quality Federation is eager to deepen our partnership with SEEKUS now in this new strategic way. Um, for those of you who don't know us yet, Equality Federation is an advocacy accelerator rooted in social justice, building the power of our network of 40 plus state-based LGBTQ advocacy organizations. We work collaboratively with our partners um, and with um, partners like SICUS to maximize state advocacy on these critical issues, uh, to mobilize people power that we need to create change and to set an expansive policy agenda uh, that includes things like comprehensive sex education to address our entire community's needs. And you know, just as school-based sex ed has been under increasing attack from the far right, um, as Jacqueline mentioned, so has the right of transgender students to exist within schools through bans on playing sports, using bathrooms, and even being called by correct names and pronouns, trans kids are becoming less and less safe at school. Um, and these attacks, you know, like the attacks on sex ed are coordinated efforts by our opposition and they are a threat to all young people's abilities to thrive. And so the launch of Educate Us could not come at a more needed time. Our shared opposition is trying to attack young people by restricting what they learn about themselves, their bodies, their relationships, and Educate Us is gonna expand the range of tactics available to the sex ed movement and to partners like Equality Federation in the fight to make a better world through comprehensive sex education. And comprehensive sex education is a queer justice issue. Being able to understand, to learn, to talk about one's sexual orientation um, and, and our gender identity, it's key to being able to make informed decision about our health, our understanding of our bodies, and understanding how our bodies relate to other bodies out in the world. You know, and without, um, without LGBTQ plus inclusive sex education, queer and trans youth are left in the dark. LGBTQ plus youth, particularly those who, who live at the intersections of multiple marginalized identities, such as black, indigenous, and other people of color, um, people with disabilities, you know, they need to be able to learn in settings that are inclusive of their experiences and their lives that give them the necessary tools to stay safe and healthy. This is why comprehensive sex ed is a queer justice issue. And, you know, however, whether legally barred, um, you know, actually banned or just ignored, LGBTQ plus inclusive sex education is just not available for most young people from no promo homo laws, which mandate that public schools either uh, don't talk about uh, our issues at all um, or talk about LGBTQ people negatively um, to bullying, uh, misgendering by peers, even teachers and school officials. Schools can be really unsafe and terrifying places for LGBTQ youth. And Educate Us is poised to address these issues and fight against the harms caused to LGBTQ plus students by ensuring comprehensive sex ed for all students through these new tactics, direct organizing, electoral advocacy, groundbreaking policy and political strategies and more. And we could not be more excited to, to join you in that partnership and to stand with you. So congratulations uh, to seek us on this new endeavor. It could not come at a more essential time for the youth in our country. And we are so looking forward to partnering um, on the road ahead. Thank you so much, Fran. Um, and thank you too for giving 
um, such a wonderful comprehensive overview of how, um, how related all of these causes are and how much a part um, at the earliest stages of our lives in education, um, sex ed, for better or worse, plays um, in, in the way our culture develops. Um, so next I'm gonna to introduce Tahir Duckett. He is the executive director of Georgetown's Center for Innovations in Community Safety. Uh, he's also a co-author along with Jacqueline um, and a neighbor in DC. Um, Tahir was previously an attorney at Relman Colfax, a nationally renowned civil rights law firm. He was also a founding executive committee member of Law for Black Lives DC. While still in law school, he founded and directed Rethink, an organization dedicated to preventing sexual violence before it starts, with a particular focus on adolescent boys. Through Rethink, Tahir identified and taught hundreds of adults to build a culture of consent, empathy, and emotional awareness among adolescent boys in their own communities, all while not relying on criminal responses to sexual violence. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Tahir. Oh, thank you so much, Soraya, for those kind words. It means so much coming from you, someone that I admire so very much. Um, and Jacqueline, thank you so much for starting this absolutely critical organization. It, it's a cause that is so near and dear to my heart because I remember so vividly what it was like in high school to be arbitrarily separated by sex and, and given two days of, of sex education where my group learned about male anatomy and STIs and nothing else. And, and I remember being just smart enough to suspect that the high rates of teen pregnancy in my school were probably related uh, to the school's failure to give us the education that we needed. What I didn't know was that good sex ed wouldn't just reduce the rates of teen pregnancy, it could reduce the rates of dating and domestic violence. It could reduce the rates of body dysmorphia, of, of self-harm break down harmful gender norms, it could reduce the rates of sexual violence. Because nature abhors a vacuum. And for too many kids, and especially those raised as boys, the information they get regarding consent and gender norms from the media, um, and, and increasingly from social media, and devastatingly from political figures, is literal poison that, that will harm them and, and that they will spread and, and, and harm others. And, and we've all seen the social impacts of the brand of masculinity that ends up filling that vacuum. Uh, now, I, I was fortunate to survive that poison, despite what I got from TV shows, from men's magazines, from blogs, from my friends. I found my way to a healthier masculinity. And I, I count myself lucky, but we can and we have to do so much better than hoping for luck. We can build a better world with the kind of comprehensive educational effort that shows our kids a healthier, safer way to live. There are those who are threatened by this, who benefit from the status quo and who know that their grip on a patriarchal white supremacist world is threatened by each generation that learns more about how those systems of oppression hurt each of us. And here's what I will grant them. They know the stakes. Right? And for far too long, too many people who support comprehensive sex ed haven't fully grasped the importance of this project. That what we're talking about is something that could be culturally game-changing and, and that that's worth fighting for. A world that is focused on preventing harm from happening in the first place. C can we all dare to imagine a world that instead of directing all of our resources to responding to harm, most often through a criminal system that has been an abject failure at remedying these harms broadly. What would it look like if we prevented it from happening in the first place? Right? What would our world look like if so many of us weren't spending so much of our brain power wading through the trauma of dating and domestic violence, of sexual violence, of, of body dysmorphia? How much could we accomplish? How much safer would we all be? How much freer would we all be? And that's the work of the academic center that I run at Georgetown Law, the Center for Innovations and Community Safety, where we're building towards a modern vision of community safety, one that reduces reliance on policing and incarceration 
and invests in the most effective strategies for keeping each other safe from violence, from self-harm, from insecurity, from abuse. And I strongly believe that we have to think about sex education as part of that vision. Um, and educate us is a long overdue giant leap in that direction. And that's why I couldn't be more proud to be part of this team. Uh, so thank you. You're, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I was saying thank you very much to for being here. And again, for stressing um, truly how interrelated all of these very serious challenges that we are facing um, really are. Um, next, I'm going to introduce uh, Rabbi Danya Ruttenberg, and she's an author and an activist, and one of my favorite Twitter presences uh, in a place that can be unremittingly bleak. She is um, always a lovely presence. Um, she's the author of seven books on religion and spirituality, including several on Judaism and feminism and Judaism and sex. And she has written for outlets such as the New York Times, The Atlantic, The Washington Post, Time, MSNBC, and elsewhere. She's been named by Newsweek and The Daily Beast as one of 10 rabbis to watch and by the Center for American Progress as one of 21 faith leaders to watch. So we're delighted to have you here today. Thank you for joining us with this, for this launch. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted and honored to be here. And in honor of this just really exciting day, um, I'm gonna teach a little smutty Talmud. Um, so uh, I'm gonna teach this famous little story and um, pause periodically to talk about some of the lessons we might be able to take out of it. Um, so there's this kind of famous story in the Talmud, if you're one of the kinds of people who thinks the Talmud has famous stories, um, about a curious student who takes his studies a little past the point, a lot past the point of what might be considered appropriate. So Kahana, the yeshiva boy in question, hides under the bed of his teacher, deliberately listening in on the master's lovemaking with his wife, right? Because people are not born with accurate information about sex and sexuality, right? And if we don't teach people what their bodies can do, they will go to wild measures to learn however they can. And the ways that people decide that they're going to learn about sex might not be the ways that we recommend. And we can only hope that they will take away the right information. And we also learn from this. This guy's going to his rabbi's bed, right? People need mentors. This student is going to his teacher, right? He's looking for wisdom from someone he trusts. So we need to show up for students and be the trustworthy teachers that they are longing for. So Kahana is under the bed and he is shocked by the way his teacher and the teacher's wife, um, this is, you know, a book written by men for men. So it's kind of male point of view, like the teacher and his wife are like talking and joking together during sex and they're laughing and they're having a great time. And he says, is the mouth of my teacher like one who has never before tasted food? Like clearly whatever's happening, there's a lot of fun. Um, Cause Kahana doesn't know that sex can be a vehicle for pleasure, right? That it can be such a like vehicle for desire, for joyous connection, right? We need sex ed that's not just information, but that is sex positive, that's affirming, that teaches students not to fear their bodies, right? That this is how that they, that they can learn about consent, about like appropriate gender norms, about safer sex and contraception and gender identity and sexuality and everything else and that their learning can be positive and joy-based and not fear-based and that they can walk out of their sex education experience healthier and more whole, right? This is what Educate Us is really all about. And so Rav, the teacher, while Kahana's under the bed, 
kind of freaking out, suddenly gets aware of Kahana's presence and says, Kahana, are you here? Get out. This is not proper behavior because boundaries are okay. And there are ways to teach about sex and sexuality. And we need to have rigorous standards in how and in what context we do this work, of course. But then Rav Kahana gets the last line. He says, yeah, but this too is Torah and I need to learn, right? This is Torah. Sex is holy, right? Sex is a sacred teaching. Torah literally in Hebrew means teaching, right? Sex is a sacred teaching. Comprehensive sex ed is a critical faith issue because we are all created in the divine image. And we need to teach the next generation how to care for their bodies, right? Because this is an issue of dignity and autonomy. And because every faith tradition, as far as I know, and I've studied every single one I've ever heard about, uh, is commands us to build more just societies, right? We know that comprehensive sex education intersects with and can impact every single structural issue in our society, right? Comprehensive sex ed is a racial justice issue. It's an economic justice issue. It's a queer and trans rights issue. It's an abortion justice issue. It's a gender justice issue. It keeps going on. There is, thank God, separation of church and state in our country. That is how it should be. But faith communities can and should be rallying behind the work of Educate Us because this is our work. This too is Torah and we need to teach. Thank you. Thank you so much for that um, lesson, which I think is so critical. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that lesson, um, a very critical one, I think, for all of us and a perspective that I think should be more widely, broadly, uh, frequently heard. Um, so thank you for joining us today with that. I'm going to reintroduce Jacqueline, who will uh, close our session with a Q&A um, segment. And again, I would like to reiterate my thanks to all of our wonderful panelists and to everyone who has joined us this morning. Jacqueline, do you wanna take it away? Hi, yes, I think actually all of our cues are aids. So what I wanna actually spend this time doing is uh, explaining how we're gonna do this and how everyone who's on this call right now can play a role. Um, but the first I wanna say thank you to all of the incredible leaders who've been here with us today, Soraya and Danya and Tahir and Fran and Graham and Sarah and Chris. Um, we, we, I'm really just so honored to have you partnering with us um, in many ways. <laughs> Um, and, and really as a testament to who we can be together, working together as one movement. Um, okay, so we are dropping some links in the chat of how you can get involved. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna be doing so that you'll want to click on them. Um, we plan to pursue three main tactical pillars. The first one is going to be investing in deep and reliable research on our new messaging approach. The right, as we have discussed, has already been doing this to great effect for decades because they know how powerful public sex education is as a tool for social change. Um, and here's what we know about social research. The middle, which is who we tend to pitch sex ed to, that's why we wind up with these small, apologetic, stigmatizing arguments. We've been operating on a misapprehension that the middle wants a moderate argument, but that's not what they want. We see over and over again in many ways, what the middle wants is a powerful story that they can connect to, they can connect themselves with. And I think that we can tell them a winning one about love, about connection, about our shared humanity, and the potential for this next upcoming generation to transform and transcend our current toxic culture, right? I think there's a huge opportunity here to speak directly to the parents who are really fed up with the, with the toxic discourse at the school boards and say, would you like your kids to learn how to grow up differently? Um, and the, one of the, 
main tools I want to use to do this shift is uh, called the race class narrative. It was developed by Anat Shankar Osorio, Ian Hanley Lopez, and Heather McGee, among other people, and has been deeply empirically tested. And what it does is show us as exactly how we can talk about our differences, but also unify across them. We can tell a story that acknowledges race, that acknowledges gender and sexuality and class, all these differences. Um, in a way that unifies us instead of dividing us, instead of pretending you know, and backing away from those issues. And to get all the important facts and correct information that we want out about what sex ed can do in the, in the container of a story that's going to get people really excited to get involved. Um, and once they do get involved, we're going to be investing in that messaging and we're looking for people to help us invest in that messaging. Uh, once we get those people activated with great messaging, we have to get them something to do, right? Uh, so we, our plan is to back local folks on the ground who are already interested in changing sex ed in their communities. So that's exactly our relationship with Graham and Vassar. We are at their meetings, we are offering our advice, we are backing their plays, we are asking them what resources, what expertise, um, what frameworks that you may not have been exposed to could be helpful here. Um, but ultimately, we believe that the folks on the ground in their own communities are the experts in how change gets made. We're here to back folks on the ground. Um, and folks on the ground have been doing amazing stuff. I know we mostly hear negative headlines and we're emphasizing how much change needs to happen, but I just wanna give a shout out to our board member, Carol Lisa Berg Powers, who's here and the entire organizing team in, in Worcester, Massachusetts, which is a very diverse working class city here in, in New England, uh, very demographically similar to the country as a whole. And they have been organizing for five years and just this spring successfully got a new K through 12 uh, curriculum, the three R's from Advocates for Youth passed for Worcester schools. And since it started to be implemented has faced a vicious, very well-funded backlash uh, from the right. Uh, and they successfully organized, backed by national organizations, including Educate Us. Um, but they really led the way on the ground about how they wanted to fight back. And I'm so proud to say that uh, they gained two seats on the school board in terms of pro-sex ed folks. Uh, and, and not a single pro-sex ed folks lost their seat. So it can be done. And we're working with the folks who can do it, right? So CARE is on our board. We're talking to electeds in other places who run on pro-sex and pro-sex ed platforms so that we can teach other uh, other electeds and other aspir aspiring campaigners um, exactly how it can be done. We also are working and talking with folks like uh, Fran at the Equality Foundation about how do we do a better job of backing school board and school committee members who want to support our issues. Um, and we're in the beginning conversation of that, but that's the kind of organizing we wanted to do too. But we're also talking about phone banking and canvassing. Uh, we're also talking about buying YouTube search terms. Organizing in 2021 looks old and new, and it's there's a whole world of tactics that if we have the resources, we can really help implement on a way for this issue that has never been done before. There's never been, as far as I can tell, large scale organizing push uh, grassroots organizing push across the country on this issue. We can do that with you. And then the last tactic in our, our, our three pillars is impact litigation. I saw somebody ask about um, whether we're going to be helping out states that need to make sure that the decent laws that are on their books get implemented. We absolutely will, and we can do that with organizing, but another way that I think we can do it is through impact litigation. We are in conversation with the ACLU of Northern California who uh, actually successfully won a fight uh, to get a California law implemented in some school districts. And, and the law is gonna be on our side for implementation, but I don't wanna stop the impact litigation train there because uh, there's more we can do. I actually, uh, if we, we wanna raise funds to hire a legal team to develop a new legal theory, because we believe that kids have an affirmative right to not be harmed by abstinence propaganda in their schools. Uh, and we would like to pursue that right legally. So stay, that's going to take a little while to develop, but stay tuned on that. The whole point is there are a million ways for you to get involved. You can click any of those links in the chat um, to get involved. To get involved can mean donate, and I don't be shy about that either. We absolutely need funding right now. We are a startup, um, but we also have an, uh, a long 
checklist of things you might like to do, different tactics you might be interested in on the Get Involved page. Let us know how you want to be involved. And if you don't know and just want to send me an email uh, to say, I'd like to be involved, but I don't know what I can do, send me that email too. That's also on the Get Involved form. You can just send that form. Um, we need every one of us bringing whatever it is that we have, whether that's Talmud or street tactics, right? Um, every one of us, if we bring ourselves to it, we really can, uh, we can win. We can make a movement that can win. Um, so I want to close with two quotes that are very dear to my heart. Um, one is, uh, grounds me in where I've been and where I come from. My temperament, my philosophy as an organizer absolutely comes from Judaism. It's not an accident that I asked uh, Danya to be here with us today and teach the Smutty Talmud. <laughs> um, there's a teaching, and one of the ancient teachings goes like this, it is not yours to complete the work, and neither is it yours to desist from it. And so I want us to think about that, right? Like, if it feels overwhelming, like, oh my god, we have so far to go from here. I find this so helpful just to think about well, I don't need to know the whole way here. And I certainly don't need to get the whole way by myself. We can't do that. But if each of us, I like to think of it as like contributing a brick here and there, contribute what you can um, and we can get there together. And then lastly, this quote uh, has, has been a touchstone for me more recently, um, but it really speaks to, um, it speaks to the potential for change. Uh, it was circulated most, after the 2016 election. And uh, it's by Ursula Le Guin, and it says, we live in capitalism, its power seems inescapable. So did the divine right of kings. Any human power can be resisted and changed by human beings. And so I just wanna end there because, um, well, because we can resist and we can make change. Everyone on this call together, we also know our entire networks, we, we are powerful enough to do this. We are the majority. So I can't wait to change sex ed for good with you. Thank you so much for being here today, everyone. <laughs>